So Adam and I are out here at Celeste Bay today. Uh, earlier in the week, there were some really good minus tides, but today uh, it's not a minus tide. Low tide is actually just zero feet. But one of the unique things about Celeste Bay is that you do not need a low minus tide to come out here and dig purple varnish clams. Purple varnish clams are pretty underutilized. Uh, we don't really see a lot of people out here digging them, but they're tasty little clams. You can have 72 of them. And so we thought we'd stop here and dig a limit a piece before we head on down the coast to go do some fishing. That right there is what they look like. And Adam's got a handful of them here. Nice big papas. You just basically come out here and dig a hole and you're gonna find clams. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get to it. Heck with it, I'm just gonna pick a spot and dig. They're everywhere, Mitch. They're everywhere. Everywhere. Dude, dude, I'm throwing a nice cluster here. Oop, there's a good one. Look at that Bahama mama oh, yeah. right there. Good. That's a good sized one right there. I have been hearing that you uh, should always fill your hole and compact it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I always try to kind of fill stuff back in That's if you can. Scoot backwards, fill in. I forget what the, uh, the method of that is, but so these, uh, these clams here, you don't have to pick every one that you get so if you do uh, get into some that are a little small you can actually just put those ones back I like to kind of make sure they're covered up but so there's a lot of them out here that size that one's kind of borderline I'd probably I'm gonna put this one back but uh, there, there's a good one see the difference in size between those this one here is pretty pretty good size for harvest this one's a little on the small side but there's no size limit so it just kind of depends on on what you want uh, maybe depending on what you have you know planned for the clams but there where's all our buddies at we should be inundated by seagulls by seagulls these make excellent, excellent chowder because you don't have to do a whole lot with them. You can gut them, you know, squeeze the little, the little mud sack out of them, but I don't even do that sometimes. I just put them in some water and purge them for a while and pretty much blanch them, take them out of the shell and just dump them right in the chowder. You get a little bit of grit once in a while, but that doesn't bother me. It's good for your teeth. It's great for your teeth. It keeps them white good for your digestive system the other important thing to consider when you're coming out here to dig shellfish any crab clams mussels but it's called the shellfish hotline and they will tell you whether it's open because we do get a toxic algae bloom sometimes that renders these tasty little critters unedible it'll make you sick so it's important to uh, check that hotline to see what's open so right now part of the Oregon coast is closed to razor clamming and it's because of the biotoxins they don't want people getting sick so four five six seven eight nine ten there's nothing like a little fresh seafood, a little tapatio. Tia tapo. It's like a fresh little cocktail. Mm. That's good. That's really good. I like that. A little salty. Uh, a little salty, a little spice. Nice. So fresh tasting. <laughs> Got a nice chew to them. Salty gummy bear. Salty, briny, seafood flavored gummy bear. Mm, nothing better. <laughs> nothing better. Bon appetit. Hmm? Not bad with the hot sauce in there, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's pretty damn good. A little hot sauce, good. a little soy sauce next time too, a little combo. 
a little clam sushi there. It's pretty good. Eight, seven. Two more. That's close. One more. I ate the one, remember? Oh, gotcha. So today I'm going to be using the uh, little gulp sandworms. There's plenty of videos out there on these. They're uh, super effective. They can be a little on the soft side. So sometimes they get tore up pretty easy by the small fish and you kind of go through them. But it just is what it is. Alright, so I think it's a small one, but I'm getting a bite. Come on. So that right there is a sign of uh, small perch. That's what I was feeling. I had one uh, attacking that. He ripped the tail off. Almost got the bait, but I'm using a size 2 hook. Um, you can use a number 4. It's a little, quite a bit smaller. But you're going to hook into a lot, you know, smaller fish. When the small ones come up and get it, you're going to hook them. And you got to deal with them. So generally the eater size type fish are going to be able to put their mouth around a size 2 hook or even a size 1 bait holder hook. And that just kind of helps you sort through some of those smaller fish. But I'm going to go ahead and change this bait out. Get something with a tail on there. bit of a workout getting out here today nice and warm out thought it was going to be uh, a little uh, cloudy today but it's sunny and kind of trying to hoof it out here well, my camera won't focus all right we're out on the jetty I probably should be a little further out but it's just, uh, I want to start fishing, so. I'm gonna start off with one of these storm wild eye. So there's a lot of rocks below me exposed, so if I do hook into a fish, I'm gonna have to kind of time this right to get down there to be able to get them out of here, so hopefully this works out. size there. 
All right, got a, I don't know, two and a half, three pound black rock bass there. On the, uh, the swim jig, so we kind of had to work to do it. Well, it's been a minute since I've caught a decent rockfish. That was a lot of fun. I got pretty excited there. Ended up, uh, he got me right in the webbing of the finger there with one of his quills. Real, real, real. Oh, Is he? Hold on a second. Let me put my shit down and see if I can help. Oh, he's already up in there? Yep. Come on, baby. There you go. It's a green leg. Is it? I think so. Oh. Don't come up. Don't come up. There you go. Swing it this way if you can't. There we go. Wow. Oh, it's a lean cod, dude. I don't think it's 22 inches. You got your tape? Not with me. I don't think I have one. That's a lean cod? Yep. Right? Yeah. It's a lean. Right Might in bring snout too, perfect, grab. I think that's 22 inches. God, that's like right, I think it's just a touch Let's under, but. My bag, dude, I might have one or something. I would just hate to get checked at the truck, but God, dude, that's so close. Dude. So close. I'd hate for you to get a ticket. There's no way that's under 22 inches, right? God, that's okay, right so there, dude. My hand is seven inches from. I... So, seven, 14. I'll even be a little generous. There's Adam's lean cod. We think it's just under 22 inches. I think it's like 21. We don't have a tape measure. We made a mistake. So, he's going to go throw that one back and get it back home. Heartbreaking. Sorry, bud. It's all right. Not worth a ticket, though. Well guys, it's uh, got kind of foggy out here on us, which was a good thing. Uh, Adam hooked into a nice ling. Just wasn't quite big enough for us to be comfortable to take it. Um, we forgot our tape measure, which was shame on us. I even uh, earlier today said something about we need to get a tape measure to take out here with us. Completely spaced it, had one in the truck, but uh, I'm pretty confident that that fish was just under legal size and it just, it's not worth uh, trying to get a ticket here. So anyway, uh, I got the one rockfish, Adam got the ling. We're just kind of hopscotching our way back in. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We haven't seen Adam for quite a while in a video. Uh, it was a lot of fun to have him with us. Yeah, and I think he enjoyed today, but uh, we got our clams. We didn't do very good at surf fishing. I had a couple small bites, but I think they were just a little shiner perch. But uh, the main focus was to come out here on this jetty and, and learn this. So this is the first time I've been on this jetty, and uh, it was a little bit of a learning experience getting out here and, and uh, learning, you know, kind of how to fish it and where to fish it. But uh, I think if uh, under the right circumstances, we can come out here again and, and probably do pretty well. So anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. As always, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.